From secret turtle armor to one-way glass to remote control redstone, here are the 81 best secret Minecraft things that you probably didn't know. Please do consider subscribing if you do enjoy, and let me know in the comments how many secret things you knew out of 81. I'm sure it won't be that many. Parrots are actually a really useful defense mechanism. A tamed parrot can imitate the noise of nearby hostile mobs, acting as a way to detect potential enemies outside your walls. This is especially useful because creepers are usually silent. So the next time you're building a base, having a few of these guys perched around might just save you a reconstruction. You ever notice those weird runic symbols on end crystals? Well, at first they may just seem like random nonsense, if you look closer you might notice something. By rotating and putting the symbols next to each other you can actually create what looks like the word Mojang. Whether this is intentional or not is yet to be confirmed, but if it is, it's a really cool and creative easter egg. Crouching or sneaking while being a universal sign of peace also has a really good and practical use. If you crouch, hostile mobs will only be able to see you from 80% of their usual range. For example, creepers that can usually detect you from 16 blocks away will now only be able to notice you from 12 blocks away if you crouch, making this very useful for caving and whenever you don't want to get spotted. Another cool feature that you might not have known about parrots is their weird cult behavior when it comes to other mobs. Untamed parrots are programmed to follow and stalk random mobs in the vicinity. This produces some really funny and really cute looking effects. The best part is I found this out completely on accident while recording footage for this script for the previous clip, the more you know. OHKOs or one hit knockouts are your best friend. Whether you're in the nether or in the stronghold, being able to kill your enemy in one hit might just save you. You may know that if you one shot a piglin, the horde won't aggro onto you, but the same applies for silverfish. If you don't kill a silverfish in one hit, more will spawn from the infested blocks around you, but knocking these critters out with one strike makes them way more easy to manage. You probably know that if a charge creeper blows up a mob, that mob will drop its skull. What you might not know is that if you wear that skull, mobs of that type will only be able to see you from half their usual distance. So if you wear a skeleton head, skeletons that can usually detect you from 16 blocks away will now only notice you from 8 blocks away. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest features in all of Minecraft, and makes this item that I thought was completely useless actually really, really useful. Bees can actually eat honey blocks. When a honey block is placed near a beehive, bees will sometimes fly towards the block and attach to it, standing completely still as if they were eating the honey. A cute little interaction that you might not have known about if you hadn't looked closely. You can fly faster or slower in spectator mode by scrolling. By scrolling up and down your hotbar, you can adjust the flying speed to as fast as 87 blocks per second or as slow as practically not moving. This makes getting around your Minecraft world much easier if you have a lot of terrain to cross. Even though Minecraft doesn't have an actual point system, when you die, the game tells you your score. This comes from your XP level, however what you might not know is that if you die with over 21,863 levels, the XP amount actually overflows the code and your score will appear negative. Does that mean you lost Minecraft somehow? If you're playing on a big server or just a really laggy world, then this is the trick for you. You probably noticed at one point or another that if a server is lagging too much, it becomes hard to eat food in a normal amount of time. Well, this doesn't have to be the case. Yes, while most foods will lag when you eat them, cake won't. Because of how cake works, no matter the lag, you can quickly bite down on some cake to get back your saturation and get right back to the combat. Did you know that you can actually find the stronghold using fossils? That's right, fossils. If you happen to set up a nether portal and locate a soul sand valley fossil in the 00, zero chunk, well you're in luck because you can predict exactly where the stronghold will be. By looking at the coordinates of the bottom corner of the fossil, we can match that up to a set of coordinates in our reference sheet that'll be linked in the description. Once we travel to these coordinates, in the nether and set up a new portal, the stronghold is often very close by. The working rate of this trick isn't always perfect, but it's a really cool way to blow your friend's minds and it certainly blew mine. Everyone hopefully knows that with a piercing crossbow you can shoot an arrow through multiple mobs at once, but what you maybe didn't know is how useful this is for curing zombie villagers. Typically to cure a zombie villager you have to give it both a weakness potion and a golden apple, but using a piercing for a crossbow and a tipped arrow of weakness, you can cure four zombie villagers at once and then reuse the arrow as many times as you want. All you need are the golden apples, and one arrow is all it will take to cure a whole village. Turtles that are fed seagrass actually grow in size by 0.2 pixels as if they were pregnant, a neat little easter egg you probably didn't know about. You can use the crafting grid as extra inventory space. By changing your Minecraft mode to touchscreen and using your number hotkeys to place items in the crafting grid, you can click anywhere with the mouse outside your inventory and the items will just stay there. You can still play the game in every 
everything with four whole extra inventory spaces. Your device doesn't even need to be touchscreen, just turn the mode on and enjoy. This trick was patched in 1.19 but works in every version before, and in 1.8.9 it even bypasses the slash clear command, allowing you to smuggle items when you're not supposed to. This awesome hack was discovered by Crafter Dark, so go check their video out in the description. You probably see these small spouts of lava and water all the time, but did you know they actually have a name? These small liquid pockets are officially called springs. That's a nice piece of Minecraft trivia to flex on your friends with. In the release notes of the old Minecraft launcher, there's actually a hidden encrypted message. This message is written in the galactic alphabet, better known as Minecraft enchanting table language, and it translates to the axolotls are not what they seem. What could this mean? Well, you can be the judge of that. Something that you probably didn't know about is the beautiful gradient produced by flowers. Now that may not sound impressive at first, but hear me out. Bone meal patterns aren't actually random. Each coordinate has a specific flower that will generate each time, and they're made to produce this beautiful design. If you bone meal any area of flowers in a flower forest and take out the grass, over time you'll see that it slowly fits to this pattern. It's a really cool and beautiful phenomenon that I'm sure you didn't know about. If you're a somewhat old player, you might know this one, but it's too cool to leave out. Back in the day before we had soul sand and water elevators, we would use glass. No, not for us of course, but for items. If you set up a dropper below a column of glass, any item dispensed would make its way to the top in very awesome fashion. You could watch as it seemingly phased through the wall all the way up. You can use this mechanic to make really cool displays for items that don't seem murky or require a lot of work. Using only a few blocks, you can make a remote control to do whatever you want, whenever you want. Like teleport to the complete opposite side of the map in an instant. By setting up this redstone contraption and mining this cobble and obsidian in the right order, the moment I switched my pickaxe, the obsidian breaks instantly, which can activate a stasis chamber or do literally whatever you want it to. For a more detailed tutorial, check out this video in the description by Jerry Lum where he explains all the restrictions and how to set it up. Raids can certainly be tough for the player, but we aren't the only ones that are nervous. So are the villagers. In fact, if a villager notices that something is off, whether it be a hostile mob or a full-out raid, they have a chance to begin sweating. They'll shake a little bit and emit some water particles above their head. A cute little motion that you also probably didn't know about. If you help an axolotl kill the mob that it's fighting, it actually has the power to clear any mining fatigue effect you may have had inflicted onto you. Not only that, it will also give you regeneration based on the number of axolotls around, granting you the achievement, the healing power of friendship. Definitely a good friend to keep around the next time you're raiding an ocean monument instead of carrying buckets and buckets of milk. You may think there's no way a secret sound exists in Minecraft, but you'd be wrong. If you scour through the game files of the 20W14 Infinite Update, you can actually find a secret folder called Nothing to See Here, Move Along. Inside are two hidden sound files, bananana.ogg and bananana.ogg. You can also access these sound in game by using the command slash play sound awesome intro, which sounds like this. If you can't tell, this is the noise of the Mojang loading screen of this update. You may know that if you give an armor stand an armor with thorns on it, it can actually kill you. By punching an armor stand with thorns armor on any difficulty that isn't peaceful, you'll take damage from the thorns. And by setting up a dispenser with thorns armor next to a villager, you can do the exact same thing, and trick your friends into attacking a villager that will actually fight back. Both of these lead to a very peculiar death message that will surely leave your friends confused if they don't know the trick. End portals are pretty pretty straightforward. You fill in the eyes, and boom, portal to the end. Something a lot of players mess up though when building their own portal is all the frames have to face inwards. If you place them from the outside, the portal won't light. However, if you build an end portal with the east and west frames facing inwards and the north and south frames facing outwards, you'll be greeted with this nice bug. If you fill in the northern frame last, the end portal will generate to the side. This bug is frankly hilarious, and I think it'll definitely confuse even the most veteran players. Igloos are one of the most underappreciated structures ever, and here are a few reasons why. First of all, if you either cure the zombie villager or just free the regular villager, the igloo is actually made to be detected as a village, which means that once you do this very simple task, if you end up getting the bad omen effect, you can just trigger a raid on the igloo. This way your main village doesn't get damaged and the pillagers will never find their way down the hatch. It's a really neat way to dispose of a raid and the pillagers, well, they won't know what hit them. But that's not all the magical properties of an igloo. In fact, igloos are especially constructed to 
secretly speed up the unzombification process. Something you probably had no idea about is that iron bars and beds are coded to speed up the villager curing process, and since both of these are found in an igloo, that makes them prime spots to cure your villagers as fast as possible. So the next time you go through with the ritual, bring with you some stereotypical prison equipment and it'll go by a whole lot quicker. And finally, the last secret thing about the igloo is the placement of the window. You see, for one reason or another, the devs intentionally place the ice window of this igloo in this location. Why? Well, it's the one place that will be melted when you use the furnace. The light from the furnace is perfectly placed to melt the window and give you a fresh water source. I have no idea why this is, but my main theory is that it helps new players reveal the secret entrance by sweeping away the carpet. But let me know your thoughts. Each mob in the game has a sound. Pigs oink, cows moo, sheeps ba, and elder guardians, well, elder guardians moan. If you turn on subtitles, the official sound for whatever noise an elder guardian makes is called a moan. Kind of funny and weird choice, but hey, it makes for a nice trivia fact. If you ever want to build up somewhere but you also want to get back down easily, so you want to make a staircase, here's a really good way to do that. Instead of just basic staircasing, if you're low on blocks, you can save a bunch of resources by just placing a torch on the block you're using. You can keep the torch in your offhand and the blocks in your main hand, then just place a block on the side of the torch, break the torch, repeat, and boom. A staircase just as effective but with half the blocks. You can make one-way glass using just maps and item frames. By using this command, you can give yourself an invisible item frame, which when you place it, as you may guess, it's invisible. Placing these frames on glass and using a custom map generator or building a giant layout, you can place the maps in the item frames and boom, one-way glass. You can see through the back just fine, but to any passerby, it looks like a totally normal wall. Well, totally normal-ish. If there's any best friend to have in Minecraft, it's the wolf. These furry companions will keep by your side and will follow you to the end of the earth, and if they ever get damaged, you can feed them back up and watch as their tail rises in delight. However, a funny feature is if you give your wolf max regeneration, health boost, and absorption, it will get so beefy its tail will go wild and trace circles in and around itself. It's a really wholesome and funny quirk. Something really useful that you probably didn't know is that TNT lit by a flame bow retains the ownership of whoever shot it. Now this may not seem that useful at first, but picture this. If you hold a sword or item with looting in the offhand and shoot a block of TNT with a flame bow in the other, every entity killed by that TNT will be affected by the looting and grant you a ton of drops very fast. Ulraf, one of the Minecraft developers, hid a couple secret notes in pictures spelled in Minecraft enchanting table language. Translating all of them together results in the message, Alays are afraid of red sheep. A reference to the evoker mechanic that turns blue sheep red. And considering Alays are found in mansion cages where evokers spawn, this secret message might just be hinting at a deeper lore connection between the two mobs. Something cool that you might not have known about Minecraft is the zombie's ability to call their friends to help in battle. In all difficulty levels, damaged zombies, husks, drowned, and zombified piglins all have a hidden ability to call all zombies within a 100 block radius to help in battle. Once this callout happens, even if a zombie is over 60 blocks away, it will still aggro towards the player. A really interesting mechanic that even I didn't know until now. Here's a really good way to sort through the creative inventory you probably never heard of. You ever building something in creative and want to decorate it and you look for flowers and all that comes up is the corn flower? Well, here's an easy fix for that. Using the pound symbol or hashtag, you can sort through categories of items. Things like hashtag flowers or hashtag fishes or even hashtag piglin loved will sort through these categories of blocks and items, allowing you to find what you need without as much difficulty. Enchanting table messages are written in the galactic alphabet, but if you translate them, you're met with all sorts of small jokes and easter eggs. For instance, one of these phrases is the Elder Scrolls, like the game. This is most likely a jab at the company behind the game Bethesda, which tried to sue Minecraft in its early days. Additionally, there's reference to HP Lovecraft's Cthulhu, with these strings of text which I won't even bother to pronounce. There's also a few more easter egg, like XYZZY, a common cheat code in games, Ambigan, a reference to The Simpsons, and Klatu Barada Niktu, a reference to the 1951 movie The Day the Earth Stood Still. A bunch of cool easter eggs that now you know about. Giants are pretty weird mobs. They've been removed from the game, added back, and can spawn naturally without commands, and you probably knew that. What you might not know is how much more broken they actually are. If you try to name a giant, its name will not appear above it like a normal mob, but instead inside of its head. Additionally, if you try to fit one of these big guys in a minecart, it'll hover well over the tracks. They also even make the same hurt noise as the player, making you wonder what the heck happened to the developers when designing this mob. 
Bob. And if you're enjoying the video, then please consider subscribing. It really helps out a ton and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want to test your Minecraft knowledge even more afterwards, check out the video in the end screen and linked in the description once you finish this one to try your hand at Minecraft trivia you also likely didn't know. Hidden texture files are one of those things that will always be around in the game. You've got Jeb's name in the Guardian texture, Zephobia's name in the Zombie Pigmen texture, but one more surprising easter egg I bet you didn't know. In the texture files of The Witch, Evoker, Illusioner, and Vindicator, there's a hidden hat texture. This hat is found in none of the models, however if you were to turn it on it would look something like this. Why does it exist? Well, I'll let you figure that one out. In Minecraft, cauldrons are pretty broken. Endermen, mobs which famously don't like water, have no problem chilling in a water cauldron. Likewise, in Bedrock and past versions of Java, mobs that are usually fire resistant, like zombified piglins, burn in lava cauldrons. Additionally, you can burn to death in a lava cauldron while underwater. The game has no problem with a fully functional lava container right in the middle of a lake, allowing you to both burn to death and drown at the same time. If you ever need to transfer Transport your minecarts across long distances, whether it be for villagers or for loot, try out this super useful trick. If you cram three minecarts onto the same rail, they actually begin to travel on their own and don't need any more rails. Not only that, you can even take out blocks in your bridge and then the minecarts will sail over the gaps. Very handy and very unknown. If you're willing to wait a bit for turtles to hatch, you can craft the legendary turtle shell helmet. This helmet, while not being as good as netherite, provides you with the power to breathe underwater for long periods of time. Many players have asked and been denied a full set of turtle armor, but that wish might be closer to reality than you may think. There actually exists code in the game for a full set of turtle armor, it just hasn't been implemented. The defense is as good as iron armor, and as for any bonuses, well they haven't been programmed yet. Still a cool little feature and maybe something we'll see in the future. You might know that if a skeleton shoots and kills a creeper, it'll drop a music disc upon death. However, if you wanted an easy way to farm records, just stuff a bunch of creepers in a hole with water and have a skeleton shoot a flaming arrow at them. If this arrow ignites a TNT, every creeper it kills will drop a disc, allowing you to obtain an absolutely massive number of records. If you're an OG player, you may painfully remember that boats used to break on impact with literally anything. Well, while you might think this feature is long gone, due to some quirk in the game's code, boats will still break into the raw materials if dropped from a height of 12, 13, all of these numbers up to 315 blocks up. Why? I honestly have no no clue. One way to find very rare resources is using pigs. Now that sentence might make no sense at first, however if you bring a pig down into the mines and then set up a tunnel covered in slabs, riding the pig into the tunnel will actually allow you to x-ray while being able to move. This x-ray tactic allows you to identify all sorts of nearby caves and finally find those sneaky diamonds. Fishing rods aren't just used for fishing fish, they can also reel in a ton of other entities. For instance, you can hook and reel shulker bullets and gassed fireballs, leading to some really fun your redirection pranks as well as a way to climb up end cities. Additionally, you can also pull prime TNT and anvils, a more dangerous catch that your friends definitely won't see coming. You can even pull certain falling blocks such as sand, gravel, and even the dragon egg. Hoglins are a very strange mob, and no, I don't just mean their extremely weird damage glitch from a couple of months ago. No, something you may not have known is the surprising amount of blocks hoglins are scared of. Three, which is more than any other mob in the game. Hoglins are repelled by not only fungus, but also by nether portals and respawn anchors. Why this is, is a mystery and I think it's a very strange interaction. There's a little bug in Minecraft that lets you make vertical slabs, a feature we've probably all wanted in the game. Just place two redstone blocks on either side of a wall and then TNT on those redstone blocks. It'll stretch out the wall of your choice and make it look like a vertical slab. Super dandy build hack if you ask me. This one goes out to all the builders out there. If you ever find yourself in need of some custom mob and block heads, Mark has got you covered. A long time ago, Ago, Mojang developer Mark created some inactive Minecraft accounts with specific skins for map makers. These accounts all have the prefix MHF, or Mark Head Format, and then whatever mob or block you may desire. Here's a quick screenshot of all the possible heads, anything from slimes to cake to presents. Just use this command over here with the name you want to use, and boom. Although since they are old, they're a tiny bit outdated. Shouldn't be that big of a problem though. Skulk sensors give off different signal strengths based on the type of sound they're detecting. There's 15 different amplitudes 
amplitudes, each with a different group of sounds associated with it. For example, walking gives a signal strength of 1, and picking up powdered snow gives a signal strength of 13. You can use this property to set up a sensor that only detects a specific sound using this design developed by Mysticat, perfect for a secret base that only you know how to open. Raids can be pretty deadly, but also pretty annoying when you're just about finished but can't spot that last pillager. Well, here's a quick fix. If you ring the village bell, all remaining raiders within a 48 block radius will have a temporary glowing effect applied to them, allowing you to see them swiftly and hunt them down easily. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Even a game like Minecraft is bound to have a bunch of annoying little quirks, and this is just one of them. If you don't want your illusion shattered, look away now. If you go into F5 mode and pan your camera down to view yourself from the waist, you'll actually find that the player's torso is offset by a pixel from the legs. It's so close, yet so far. Sadly, this will never be fixed as it is an intentional feature meant to prevent something called Z fighting, but it still hurts me internally just as much. Something many players forget or might not know at all is that bee stingers are a visible model. When you get stung by a bee in Minecraft, the stinger remains inside of you, and going invisible produces a really strange and funny looking effect. Typing in North Carolina in the seed box gives the same world as that in the demo version of the game. Likewise, in Bedrock, typing Forest Glade gives the same seed as the trial version. A common myth in Minecraft is that placing torches disables a spawner, however this isn't exactly true. There's no magic game mechanic that actually prevents spawners from working if you place torches. It's actually just light levels. The torches just happen to be enough to light up the nearby area to a light level high enough the spawner doesn't work in. If you obstruct the brightness of the torches, you can see mobs spawn on the outside when it's dark. This does mean you can also use jack-o'-lanterns or any other powerful light source to completely disable a spawner, although yes, torches are way more convenient. Additionally, blaze spawners and silverfish spawners can't actually be disabled by measly torches, as their light level requirement is lower so doing this won't do anything. To disable a blaze spawner, you must arrange glowstone blocks or other strong light sources in this fashion. You probably know that Frostwalker turns the water underneath you to ice, but did you know that this actually isn't ice at all? It's a special type of block called frosted ice that only appears through this enchantment. Makes sense when you think about it, but something you might not have known. Now this is a secret feature just because it's so so subtle. When you pick up a fish in a bucket, the texture of the bucket actually goes down by one pixel. No, this isn't a glitch, it's an intentional feature. According to Joppa, a Mojang texture designer, the weight of the fish actually causes the bucket to be pushed down. Quite a strange and useless easter egg, but hey, now you know. If you're on Windows, you can add a bunch of useful characters into signs and into chat. Simply press the Alt button on your keyboard as well as the corresponding numpad configuration. For instance, 24 for an arrow, and boom, that'll appear in game. Piglins are infamous for heavily protecting the bastions and the loot they contain. If you break any sort of container next to these guys, it's not gonna end well. However, if for whatever reason you want to get the loot but can't afford to take any damage, try this weird and wacky trick out. If you place a hopper below the chest with loot and feed it into a minecart chest, you can then push the minecart out of range of the piglins, essentially committing a heist right under their noses. This also works with only a hopper, but it's much cooler this way. Whether this is actually worth the effort is up for debate, but it's certainly a fun way to swindle these little guys. Something cool cool, cute, and slimy is the following. If you name a slime or magma cube with a name tag, killing it will result in offspring with the same name, like father like son, huh? This is a very cool but useless way to duplicate name tags and a feature you might not have known. The Minecraft song Living Mice by C418 is the opposite and a reference to Dead Mouse, the Canadian music producer who helped C418 design the Minecraft soundtrack. The next feature is simply a secret because it's so hard to spot, like it's hiding in plain sight, but I bet you never would have noticed if I hadn't pointed it out. Take a look at the honey bottle and the water bottle. Notice anything different? Well, while the water bottle and all subsequent potions have an empty space made up of an upside down T, the honey bottle is just slightly more full, four pixels more full to be exact. This actually wasn't a mistake and was fully intentional, but I don't think we'll ever really know why. The official Minecraft 1.17 trailer was filled with many, many goats, but one that you might not have noticed was this one, 20 four seconds in. No, not that one, this one. This small, brighter bundle of stars is the constellation Capricornus, which represents the sea goat and is the Latin name for goat horn. The fish texture on a fisherman villager is in fact a reference to the long forgotten texture in older versions of the game. This texture was replaced by cod and salmon, but lives on in the fisherman's clothes. Some things in Minecraft seem to have strange names, but upon further inspection, 
make complete sense. For instance, nilium is just a combination of the words nether and mycelium. Additionally, according to Mojang, the word shulker comes from the two words shell and lurker, hence how the shulker lurks in its shell before coming out. If you're having trouble taming a horse, feeding it a golden apple before saddling up makes it way more likely to accept you. This mechanic actually comes from Greek mythology, specifically the horse Arion, a super fast horse that only ate precious metals like gold. Using the replace item command, you can add a bunch of different items onto your head. However, one easter egg you might not be aware of is using a lightning rod on your head places it on the side like a snorkel. A nice little feature if you ask me. The original concept for the warden was actually meant for the 1.16 nether update as a type of blind piglin that could only respond to sound. This is what it looked like in its early prototype phase, but this idea was eventually postponed as they ran out of time. If you're in survival mode, you probably know that you can only enchant things with the proper enchantments. You can't add sharpness to sticks or protection to a grass block. However, there is one strange block that can be enchanted. Jack-o'-lanterns, to my knowledge, are the only non-usable blocks that can be enchanted in the entire game. And the thing is, you can only do it with curses. You can't curse a single other block, however, for whatever reason, you can curse a jack-o'-lantern. Maybe it's trying to tell us something. Or maybe Mojang just really wants you to put Curse of Binding, I don't know. You may know that different items in Minecraft have different rarities. Different colored text indicates a different tier of rarity. Golden apples are in the rare tier, while enchanted golden apples are in the epic tier, signified by this purple text. However, if you just manually enchant a regular golden apple, you'll actually trick the game into changing its rarity to epic. Granted, it won't do anything an actual notch apple can do, but it'll definitely confuse a friend. You are probably aware that beacon beams can pass through pretty much every transparent block, as illegal as it may look. But nothing looks quite as weird as this interaction, a beacon beam passing straight through bedrock. At first, this seems completely random and ludicrous. I mean, why would this be a thing? But it actually makes a ton of sense when you consider that this was added so that beacons can be used in the nether. Now, that's a strange feature with a very wholesome explanation. Speaking of beacons, this is probably a trivia fact that you never thought about, but now that I mention it, it may just make sense to you. If you head over to the end ships and take a look at the mast, you'll notice a strangely placed piece of glass instead of purple. While at first, this odd design choice seems to have no real meaning, it was actually put there since the original purpose of the end ship was to give a player a beacon and not an elytra. The hole in the mast would allow the beacon beam to shine through and that's why it was placed there. However, when the loot was swapped for an elytra, the hole remained as a tribute to what could have been. A real life trivia fact that you may know is that a group of crows is called a murder. Well, according to Dinnerbone, the canon name for a group of endermen is called a haunting of endermen. Pull that one out the next time you're being chased to your death. The phantom is known for its insomnia attacks. It'll attack when you haven't slept for a long time and is fittingly named a creature of nightmares. However, this nickname may be more true than you thought. The sound files for the phantom were actually taken from Mojang developer Samuel Auberg's son screaming in and out of his sleep. The nightmares just got a whole lot more real. Breeding mobs is pretty commonplace in Minecraft, but what if you breed two mobs from different species? Well, you can't, right? Wrong. By feeding both a donkey and a horse a golden carrot, you can actually crossbreed them to make a mule. This mob has characteristics from both a horse and a donkey and can't spawn naturally. It can carry a chest and its speed depends on how fast the horse is. Pretty cool and useful mob. One of the seemingly dumbest design choices in Minecraft is the fact that you need a diamond to craft jukeboxes. I mean, why? What's the point? Why on earth would this music device require a diamond? Well, the answer is more rooted in fact than you might suspect. The jukebox in Minecraft is actually based on the Edison phonograph, which famously uses diamond-tipped needles to better play its discs. So while annoying, this crafting recipe isn't completely absurd. The current repeater crafting recipe may seem arbitrary at first, but it actually is a reference to something you probably didn't know about unless you're an OG player. If you go back many years before the repeater was added, pulses used to be extended by inverting two redstone torches as such. Thus, when the repeater was eventually added, it was designed to mimic this little system. A fun piece of redstone trivia you probably didn't know. Something I only recently found out existed was mood. If you open up the F3 menu, you may be able to notice a little text in the corner saying mood and some percent. This percent represents your progress towards getting a cave sound. When you're in a dark space or a cave surrounded by non-transparent blocks, your mood slowly increases. And when you're not in such a space, it slowly decreases. Once the mood bar hits 100%, a random cave noise is played and the percent resets to zero. There's a very interesting and complicated formula for determining the mood, however, I won't bore you with it. Still a nice mechanic that you probably didn't know existed. Okay, this one is more of a life hack 
tagged in a secret feature, but I thought I'd still mention it because I'm certain it will help you one day. If you're trying to pearl across, let's say, an ocean of lava in the nether or a giant obstacle and you don't know if you'll make it, try throwing a snowball instead. Since snowballs follow the same trajectory as pearls, you can use this mechanic to predict where the pearl will land and if you can make the gap yourself. This has saved me multiple times and I can't recommend it enough. A small feature, a little head nod if you will, that you probably didn't realize is that netherite tools are the only tools in the game to have a crimson shaft, hence their nether origins, whereas all the other tools in the game have regular wooden sticks as their handles. Additionally, now that I got you looking, you probably also realize that netherite tools have grips as well, a nice tidbit of separation from the normal kit set. When riding a mob, you probably notice that its hearts are a weird orange color, and you might have asked yourself why aren't they normal colored? Well, these hearts are specifically made to mirror the saddle texture. I should have made this connection years ago, and now that I know it, it definitely does make sense. Before emeralds were added to the game, the currency for trading used to be rubies. However, many people complained that they were way too similar to redstone, and developer Dinnerbone, being red-green colorblind, also couldn't distinguish the two well. So emeralds were added instead, and rubies were lost to time. But speaking of time, it looks like we're out. If you want to keep testing your knowledge in a Minecraft trivia game show made just for you, the viewer, then click this video on the left. If you want to learn about a bunch of Minecraft life packs that you could be missing out on, click this video on the right. But thank you so much for watching, let me know in the comments how many you knew out of 81, please do consider subscribing, and peace out, have a good one, I'll see you next time.